गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन दोज हु आर कनेक्टेड वाया स्काइप एंड ऑल्सो दोज हु आर कनेक्टेड वाया फेसबुक स्ट्रीमिंग लाइव from conditioning to watching before i begin i would like to share a small story it actually happened or not may have happened that is not my point i want to share the message that is contained in this story and that is what is relevant long ago there was a king in india named harshvardhan he belonged to maurya dynasty once it happened neighboring state attacked him and captured him and imprisoned him the king told him that i would like you to give me one answer and if your answer is correct and satisfactory to me i will return your kingdom and free you if you are not able to answer the question i will put you into prison a life long prison what was the question the question the neighboring king asked was what does a woman really want what does a woman really wants in her life he went to philosophers wise men priests whoever he could find he visited many women prominent ones astrologers priests but no one could get give him the correct answer he had a friend with him his name was siddhraj he suggested that there is a magician woman it is said she has the answer to every question you must visit her to get the answer so to the king harshvardhan and his friend siddhraj went to see that magician woman she was ugly her teeth had no teeth the cheeks had sunk in and a bad smell was coming from her mouth she said i can answer your question but i have one condition the condition is that your friend has to marry me the king harshvardhan did not agree to that condition however the friend said i can sacrifice for your sake i want you to get back your kingdom it does not matter if i have to fulfill the condition of this magician woman 
and he agreed to get married to her. The magician woman said, the answer to that question is, what does a woman want the most in her life? She said, the woman in life wants freedom to make her own decisions. If you can provide this much freedom to take her own decisions, at least a part of her own decisions that concerns her, there will be prosperity. You can give her all the financial freedom or anything that does not satisfy a woman. What does really satisfy when you give her a freedom to take decisions relating to her on her own without any interference from anyone? Nothing more satiates him, satiates her than this. This reply appealed to King Harshwardhan and he gave that reply to the neighboring king who has captured his kingdom and he was very happy with that answer. He said, I am very much pleased with that answer. I return your kingdom and set you free. Now what happened to the friend? The magician woman said, I saw your sincerity, your love for your friend. I would, I have the power that 12 hours for the day I will convert myself into a beautiful woman and the remainder of the 12 hours I will maintain my this particular ugly form. If you agree to that. Siddharaj said my dear friend, I have agreed to marry you unconditional. It does not matter whether you remain ugly or beautiful. I have decided to marry you. It does not matter now. At this the woman said, your answer is so pleasing that I will remain forever beautiful for you. She said, my real form is this beautiful that you see. The ugly form I have maintained to protect myself from the vagaries of the society and all that that comes with it. You can give anything to the woman, but the most important thing that you need to give her is the freedom to make certain decisions that relates to him, relates to her. For example, certain aspects of the decisions relating to the kitchen. Let that be her freedom. If she inquires from you, you respond. But the answer, but the decision should come from her, not that you decide. then there can be no conditioning. Man is a part of conditioning 
and this conditioning is old. Our father lived this way and that is our legacy that we continue to live and then we pass it on to our children, the younger generation. In reality you are not part of the conditioning, instead you are watcher, witness. But deep inside man has the glimpse of what seems like centuries of conditioning. And this conditioning creates a feeling that enlightenment may not be possible while others might. Such an attitude is natural mistrust that man has to break because his attitude, this particular attitude, prevents him from being enlightened. He considers this as his destiny that Buddha can attain, but I cannot. You have to have certitude. And one thing that I had opposed, you want to shoot an arrow. For that you place the arrow on the bow and you pull it backward. The greater force you use to pull it backward with the greater intensity and velocity it will move forward towards its target. In the same way, whenever the circumstances and situations in life Try to drag you backward. Remember, not this as a failure. Instead, consider this as an opportunity that now the life wants to launch you in something more precious and beautiful. When you pull the arrow backward, does the arrow feel anything that you are dragging me in the past, pulling me backward in order to move forward? The force comes from, from the back. So you have to break that attitude and then you will be able to move forward. Such feeling arises for many seekers at different stages, but it has to be explained so that you can understand clearly what is happening. The first glimpse that comes to you, when you look inside, you get the glimpse of centuries of conditioning. Not only the conditionings of this life, but that of many lives before. This will happen to everyone because everyone has been conditioned for centuries. You are forgetting just one thing which is often forgotten by the seekers of their inner world and that is most important to remember not to forget at all times. In the beginning each one of you has this feeling of a glimpse of what seems like a centuries of conditioning.
for everything. However, one thing is certain that you are not part of this conditioning. You are a watcher on the hill. You are a witness. When you go in, you see centuries of conditioning, a huge mountain of conditioning, a vast desert, a vast ocean with no shelter. You may get tired flying and not find the other shore. This is what happens when you go in. You see centuries of conditioning around your consciousness, but in reality you are not part of this conditioning. And that is the only ray of hope that you have. Conditioning may be of centuries. It does not matter at all. The most important thing is not to identify with it. You had many such occasions while traversing through the life's roads, but we go on identifying ourselves. The moment a particular name comes to your mind, you begin to identify all that relates to that person. That circumstance or situation is no more there, but its impression has left an indelible impression. So the moment you disidentify yourself with those conditionings, with that particular event or circumstance or situation, you may have encountered a very unpleasant circumstance and situation in your life and you continue to remember. I am not saying forget it. Disidentify yourself with that. You are moving forward you have to disidentify. Maybe you can remember it afterwards, then it will not have any effect on you. But for that very moment, you have to have sever all identifications with that. This applies to anything that you want to do in life and you find that something keeps on popping up or creates an obstruction, immediately disidentify yourself with that. And in that, what will happen? All those conditionings that has been creating a problem will lose all power and control over you and you become immediately free. You will become one who is seeing the centuries of conditioning but is not identified with it. Certainly the seer, the observer is separate from that which he is seeing. You go into the garden and you see these trees but you do not feel identified with those trees. However, when you go inside and you feel centuries of conditionings, you begin to identify, but in reality you are not conditioning. It is your identification with them that creates the problem. The moment you decide that you are not going to identify yourself with those, they will lose control over you. You find centuries of conditionings, you begin to identify, but in reality you are not conditioning. 
there is duality of observer and the observed. The conditioning is there and you are seeing it. The duality has come in. The observer and the observed. Observed is the conditioning and you are the observer. The duality has come in. The moment you realize disidentification happens. You realize and the revolution begins. This is the beginning of a revolution in your very idea about yourself that you are no more conditioning, instead you are consciousness. Conditionings are just like the dust which has gathered on the mirror. It can be washed away and the mirror will come to its purity immediately the moment the dust is removed. The conditioning is dust on your consciousness and consciousness is the mirror. It's not a difficult thing. There are moments when all of a sudden a particular circumstance and situation comes. The difference between you and me is I have gotten that secret to disidentify myself at any moment completely from any particular circumstance and situation withdraw myself and so nothing bothers nothing creates an obstruction any circumstance and situation becomes a stepping stone whereas this does not happen with you. The moment something begins to crop up like dust it is going, it's like breeze is blowing, the dust is flying and gathers on your windscreen as you are driving through the roads. What do you do? You use your wiper blade and the water from the bottle which is there as a part of the mechanism of the vehicle. Immediately the windscreen, the dust from the windscreen is removed and it becomes clear once again. If we understand this a simple analogy we can make our path clear. We can make our journey easier. No dust can destroy the mirror. It can only hide the reflecting surface of the mirror. It can make the windscreen and your view opaque. All these conditioning they do is make your remove, make your vision opaque and you are not able to see clearly. The dust can be removed from the mirror. Conditionings can be removed very easily and the moment it is removed you are the watcher. Secondly, with identification of feeling arises within you that I can certainly not achieve anything in life. I am making so many efforts but nothing is happening. I certainly will not become enlightened although others might. This 
certainly that you will not become enlightened is arising out of your misunderstanding about the conditionings. Seeing so many conditionings, a thick layer of the dust, you have lost hopes. You think you will never become enlightened. However, you are certain the others might. And all these others have the same conditioning and the feeling too as you have. This is the irony. You have a feeling that the other will get enlightened but you will not. The other has this similar feeling. Do you think the other are new people in the world? They are as old as you are. They have the same con similar conditionings that you have. They have passed through all that you have passed through. They have gathered as much dust as you have gathered. But your misunderstanding is giving you a certainty. Once your misunderstanding is dropped consciously, you are enlightened in that very moment. The only one thing is certain, nobody can prevent anybody, anyone from becoming enlightened. There is no power in the world which can prevent anyone from becoming enlightened because enlightenment is your nature, it is your flowering. When a seed, a bud flowers, it flowers from within. Nothing comes from outside. Flowering is the self-actualizing its own inner potential. Enlightenment is your nature and the flowering. And in fact you are already enlightened, but you have forgotten. You just do not know it. You have forgotten it. Indeed, enlightenment is the forgotten language. It has only to be remembered. And the way to remember is to disidentify with all the conditionings that may be there. Let them be there. Remember, I am not one of them. I am not identified with them. I am the knower. I am the seer. I am the observer. I am the awareness. And awareness cannot be touched by conditionings in any way. And now the third thing comes. This attitude, a natural mistrust, and then this attitude becomes your habit. First it comes a natural mistrust about your own capabilities, and then this becomes a part of your habit. This you have to break. Yes, it is a natural phenomenon. Everybody gets mixed up with their conditionings and it is only a habit and nothing else. You can drop it without any effort. Just by becoming aware of what I am saying to you. And lastly, this attitude cannot prevent you from becoming enlightened. Certainly, if this attitude prevails, it will not prevent. It can go on postponing. It can delay. It has the capabilities to postpone for centuries, which is almost like preventing. But if you drop this attitude, this very moment you are free. 
this very moment you can open your wings and fly into the sky do not let your questions be intellectual you have not been meditating you have been just thinking about things hence the fear arises in you if you had been meditating then what i have said to you you would have discovered yourself i need not tell you if the process of introspection has set its roots in you whatsoever i am telling you is very simple ordinary there is nothing significant in it but my observation is such the process the roots of in introspection has set in nothing can become an obstruction you have to stop thinking about these things thinking is not going to lead you anywhere you start meditating become more aware more alert and then you do not need to ask anything the answer is within you i am simply saying that which you will find a rising within you and that will be the day a most precious day in your life if you start meditation then there will be no need for me to go on speaking to you in myriad ways those who have started the process the process of introspection and meditation they don't need me any more because what is important what the, what is the essence of these talks is not the content content is insignificant what is important what is the essence of these talks is to set the process of disidentifying with the conditionings immediately the mirror the surface of the mirror becomes crystal clear the reflection of the inner begins to happen nothing obstructs you from getting a clear vision ahead of you you can see very clearly in front of you and when you can see clearly you can drive you can move forward you start meditation then there will be no problem for you to ask any question and i do not need to speak to you in many ways only this much for this morning until saturday do have a pleasant day and take care